Whew. Man. Today's been a day if you're a Hurricanes fan. There is not enough cafecito in the world to take my mind off what has been going on today. So if you've been living under a rock for the past 48 hours, let me get you caught up. So it has been rumored that Tyler Van Dyke is looking to jump into the transfer portal. All right. Lots to unpack here. The rumor was he was looking at Alabama, um, that there's that whole Tommy Reese connection, that now he's the OC over there. Uh, Listen, this one had me scratching my head, and let me tell you why. Um, When I heard Alabama, I was like, wait a minute. Isn't Alabama, like, really loaded at every position, especially quarterback? It means, I mean, they crank out first-round pick after first-round pick, it seems like. So, I don't know. It just, it didn't make too much sense at the time. But, I mean, the possibility of him wanting to transfer out, I guess it's feasible, I mean, look, in this in this day and age of NIL and the transfer portal, this is the downside. of Your team, every single player on your roster is a free agent literally 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. At all times, you got to be constantly re-recruiting your own squad, unless you are Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, Georgia. Outside of those four, you're you got to constantly resell your your star players. That's just a fact. That's just the way it is. Maybe that'll change years down the road. Uh, you know, maybe guys will actually become uh, instead of student athletes, they'll actually become employees, so they'll be paid as such. So they have to sign contracts. I don't know, but the fact of the matter is, it's a super fluid thing. So back to TVD. I think about it and I'm like, man, is this guy willing to up and leave after everything the school and, you know, Mario Cristobal has done, you know, going out and hiring a new OC that caters more to his strengths going out. And of course, continuing to fill the pipeline with top end recruits um, going out and not just getting a coach that's going to develop his wide receivers into more of the playmakers he needs. We saw that a full display in the spring game, but also he's going to be active in the portal, you know, Crystal Ball and this staff is going to bring in more talent, especially at the skill positions. He's not done. Um, so it's the whole thing is just very odd. And then, of course, I listen to Alex Dono's show today. Shout out to him. Locked on Canes. I listen to it almost every day. Uh, he had the man, the guru himself, Larry Bluestein on. And, uh, you know, he was talking about how he, he kind of voiced the same opinion I had. And he verbalized it way better than I could. He was like, yeah, it doesn't really make much sense to me because Alabama's loaded. Why ruin what you've got? It's not a Nick Saban move. Um, you know, it could just be, you know, a, a whole a whole lot of nothing. Maybe there's – obviously there's some smoke there because the story has pretty much gone viral in, in Kane's Twitter. Um, and, of course, you know, 247 was reporting it and Footballville, I think, was reporting it. Um, obviously there's something there. Now – uh, I've read some more stuff recently this afternoon, and I'm literally like refreshing my socials as I do this to make sure I don't miss anything. But it's it, it could just be a matter of um, of NIL. It could just be that. It could just be a matter of, hey, as Tyler, you know, at, at TVD wants to do what's best for him and his family, and he wants to do, um, you know, what's best for business for Tyler Van Dyke and. Fi- on some level, I can respect that. It's just the timing of it is very odd. And, you know, it. there's a lot to unpack there. It's just, it's very odd to me. Obviously, in the coming days, we'll know what's going to happen. Um, but it could just be a matter of that. He's just looking for the, the best opportunities NIL-wise, um, business-wise. And you know what? Hopefully, what Larry Bluestein said earlier today uh, comes true, that he ends up staying Um you know, he thinks that it's highly unlikely. Um, I'm kind of on the fence. I think it's 50-50 whether he stays or goes. Um, hopefully we can convince him to stay. Obviously, it would it would hurt if he left. He's an experienced quarterback, very, very good to great quarterback. Um, elite, like Bryce Young, first round level. I don't know about that, but Tyler's a very solid quarterback that I think could run this offense very effectively. And even though he would only be here for one more year, in all likelihood, I would hate to see him go. Um, now 
if the worst should happen and Tyler Van Dyke does bolt for the transfer portal, what are we left with? What does that leave? Where does that leave the Miami Hurricanes in 2023? Well, you've got two promising, very promising young talents in Emory Williams and Jakari Brown. Jakari Brown, the way he performed in the spring game, to me, is not really indicative of the progress he's shown throughout spring practice. I think you got to look at the body of work and not just one glorified scrimmage. And, and really, that's all it is. It's a glorified scrimmage for the fans. And his skill set is doesn't really cater itself to a spring game because you literally touch a quarterback or, or like, like breathe on him. They call it a tackle and the play's dead. Jakari Brown's weapon... His main weapon for now is still his legs. And believe me, I saw it for myself with my own eyes. The dude could break an 80 yard touchdown at any time. And he's hitting his throws a lot more consistently, a lot more accurately. So I'm very pleased to have seen uh, Jakari's progress so far. I think he's much closer to being that guy that can take that torch as the starting quarterback, but he's not quite ready just yet. He's a lot closer than he was last year. If he ends up being the guy, then he's the guy. But in my opinion, if Van Dyke is gone, Mario is going to – I think he was already going to bring in a transfer QB. Now he might bring in a couple guys just to stir up some competition. Ideally, if it were me, I would bring in grad, grad transfers or guys that only have one more year of eligibility because you don't want to ruin what you got going with Jakari. You, if you've promised him, hey, this is your, your show next year, I think it should stay that way. I think you should nurture that relationship. Um, bring in a veteran guy, a guy that's not going to lose you a game, a great game manager, someone with a solid arm that can move a little bit. Then, you know, we got something cooking. There's not much of a drop off. So I'm not too concerned there. Cause let's be honest, we weren't going to win any, any championships this year. We weren't gonna, you know, compete for an ACC or a playoff berth. We're still a couple of years away from that at least. So, and also, like I said earlier, TVD, this was going to be his final year with Miami anyways. So while it sucks and it would hurt if we lost him, I don't want it to happen. I hope, you know, you know, everything works out and he can be convinced to stay. Um, but, you know, if it doesn't, there, there are other things, other things to look forward to. Um, like, for example, <laughs> look, you got a possible all-timer on defense in Ruben Bain. I, I mean, a... a when I say all time, I don't throw that word around often. All right. Um, so, you know, and of course, recruiting, you, you got a lot to look forward to there. Transfer portal, uh, future commits that, you know, we're going to be active in the portal. So we're going to br be bringing in more talent. The roster, the way you see it now, like Coach Cristobal said himself, could be significantly different come fall. So be patient, guys. If he leaves, yes, it would hurt. It would suck. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope he stays to, you know, keep the continuity going, but you know, um, this team will adjust and at the end of the day, we'll be okay. Cause we're not, we're not, we weren't going to accomplish anything significant in 2023. Let's be honest. We are building for the future. Uh, speaking of building for the future, um, we got, we landed some commits recently. Let's talk about it. So going into the spring game, I think we just had, aside from the kicker, who's the number one kicker in the country, we had Judd Anderson was our lone non-kicker commit. 6'6", um, 220-something pounds, rocket arm. Uh, I think he could be developed, and he's pretty nimble for 6'6", six six, so I think he can uh, he can fit the system well. And then after the spring game, you got a big-time commit from Chance Robinson, who is elite. Go watch his tape. Treat yourself to that. He is elite as a route runner, as a pass catcher, everything. Checks a lot of boxes. And then since then, uh, we got this slew of, yes, three stars. I don't care about star ratings anymore. And I'm going to drop another video uh, later on, kind of exposing how much BS I think the whole star system is. Now, is it always wrong? No. Francis Maui Go is a five-star, and he's an absolute stud. He's a monster. Uh, but then you got Ruben Bain, who is ranked like 100-something, and he's a, and he's a four-star, far from being a five-star. To me, that is a five-star caliber player. So there's a lot of flaws to it. And, of course, the amount of three stars over the years that have gone on to be NFL Pro Bowlers, NFL Future Hall of Famers, J.J. Watt, it, it, the list is literally endless. So let's look at these recent commits. You got Dylan Day, who of these guys, I think, yeah, he's a little bit more developmental. 
Um, you know, he's a little undersized at 5'11", 160, 170 pounds. Bit of a small guy. If Mario Cristobal finds a guy that's a little undersized and he wants him, that means he sees something in him. He sees something special in him. I turned on Dylan Day's tape. Let me tell you, that boy, very talented. He is very talented. His coverage skills are very advanced for a young man his age. Very advanced. I mean, he sticks guys like glue. Um, good tackler. He's not afraid of contact. Plays with a mean streak. Love everything about him. Checks off all the boxes except maybe his size. But you know what? Um, you know, Bob Sanders from the Indianapolis Colts, if you're – on the younger side, go look him up. That dude was like 5'8", a buck 60, and he would, like, truck people. I mean, nasty. So, like, you know, there are exceptions to these rules, okay? So, that being said, I love um, I love what I saw from Dylan Day's tape. He's from the state of Louisiana. It's a hotbed of talent. I think uh, the young man has a chance to do very well here if he's, if he's developed right. Um, and his stock, I think, is going to go up. Next, you got Juan Manaya, 6'6", 330 pounds, also listed as a three-star. In some places, he's not even rated. I think on 247, he's not even rated yet. Keep in mind, there are literally thousands of three-stars out there. Um, you, you think these guys have time to sit down and actually study film and go to camps and actually see these guys up close and see these guys perform in games? Of course not. There's just not, there are not enough hours in the day. There's not enough days in the week. So a lot is going to slip through the cracks. And of course, interior linemen, typically they don't get high ratings anyway. The sexy positions are tackle, quarterback, receiver, pass rusher, you know? So Juan Manaya, six foot six, 335 pounds. I mean, you, you don't have much more to say there. I mean, I think he's going to fit this line very well. There's another six foot six, 330 pound guy on the line already who was a three-star recruit. His name is Inez Cooper. Performed very well as a true freshman. I look forward to see his progression this season. I think he could be dominant, actually. Um, and then you got Chris Wheatley Humphrey. This dude's not a three-star, simply put. If I had to rate him, um, it, it, he's not just a three-star. He, I mean, he's not just a four-star. He, he would be like a high four-star. And his stock is going to rise tremendously. His The offers are going to come in like crazy. He's kind of in a... He plays at a school, I believe it's South Broward. He plays at a school that's not really watched very much. Uh, it's not, you know, a lot of people don't go out to see him. He's not, he's not at, at he doesn't play at your American Heritages or IMG. He doesn't play at one of those sexy schools that draw a lot of eyeballs. But the dude will carry the ball eight, nine times and get like 200 yards in a game. Like he, he averaged 16 yards a carry as a junior last season. And his senior season might be even better. And he still has to put on more muscle and all that stuff. The guy, he stands at six foot, 175 pounds, roughly. So he's got room to grow. Um, his speed is elite. It's stupid. It's like first round caliber speed. Miami got a special one in Chris Wheatley Humphrey. Trust me, you're, you're all going to love him. He's an absolute dynamic playmaker. Um, can be a playmaker in the passing game. I see him creating mismatches in the Shannon Dawson offense. I think it it fits perfectly. Um, Chris Wheatley Humphrey, that that is <laughs> an example of a flawed rating system. Let's just say that. Uh, and finally, most recently, uh, I think it was, it was just yesterday. I, I, this past day has been a blur. <laughs> but overshadowed by the whole TVD saga is um, the commitment of Isaiah Thomas. Um, Isaiah Thomas, again, size, six, two and a half. 200 pounds as a safety. Um, he could play in the box safety. He could be a linebacker. He could even play that star position. I I see him going down to that star position or linebacker position simply because his length is six. His wingspan is six foot seven. Ridiculous, ridiculous wingspan. Um, can't wait. Can't wait to see him hit the field a couple of years from now because. Um, you know, he draws comparisons to Caleb Spencer, obviously, because of the size is almost identical. Um, and honestly, he's as much as I love Wes Bassain, I think he's going to be special. Um, he is right now bigger than Wes Bassain was last year as a true freshman playing linebacker. So you got some options here. He's kind of a tweener. So he's either going to be a big, hard hitting safety 
that can make a lot of plays, or he's going to be a fast, quick, twitchy linebacker that can also make a lot of plays and still bigger than most linebackers we've had in recent memory. So Isaiah Thomas, love that one. I saw his tape, loved what I saw, um, has a nose for the football, great tackler. And of course, again, six foot seven wingspan, you can't teach that kind of length. And that is so important nowadays, you know, clogging up the passing lanes, knocking passes down, um, you know, obviously uh, wrapping guys up and making tackles. That gives you a distinct advantage. So love the pickup. And you know what? This staff ain't done. We might get a couple of more commits here in the next week or so. And then, of course, you got the summer. The summer is usually when you start seeing the elite guys making their announcements. Last year, Francis Maligoa and Jaden Wayne, I think, committed during the summer. So, you know, so uh, you you never know. I think um, here now in June, July, you'll start seeing those bigger names start announcing where they're going to go. I think Miami's going to land. You know, they're going to get their piece of the pie like they like this staff is always going to do. And they're going to get their guys. So um, that is, uh, you know, that, that, that was my, I guess, my take on the whole Tyler Van Dyke saga and some recruiting updates for you guys. Also, the portal window is is open. You've probably seen just today alone the amount of guys that have, the amount of quality talent that has hit the transfer portal just in the last 24 to 48 hours. It's sick. Miami is going to is going to get their share. Talent wise, we're going to be fine. Quarterback situation remains to be seen. But until then, don't panic just yet, guys. Let's let this play out. Um, you know, if Tyler decides to stay, awesome. I will sh I'll show him all the love in the world because at the end of the day, we don't know what's happening behind closed doors here, okay? He's got to do what's best for him. I hope he makes the decision to stay because it seems like the school has shown him a lot of love and they're committing to him succeeding this year. I hope he sees that and I hope he decides to stay. But if not, hey, wish him the best. As always, it's all about that. You, good old Kings of Cafecito. Go Kings.